Okay, hello and welcome everyone. So in this video, I'm gonna talk about the relationship between revenue and elasticity. And so the starting point is to recognize that we are defining or to remember that we are defining revenue as price times quantity, right? So mathematically, revenue is equal to P times Q. So the first thing we wanna think about is when a firm is gonna change its price, there is gonna be two ways that revenue is influenced. One is directly through that price. When I change the price, I'm gonna earn a different amount on every amount on every quantity sold. The other effect is by changing the price, we know through the law of demand, there's gonna be a different quantity sold. So if I raise the price, you're gonna sell a lower quantity. If you lower the price, you're gonna sell a higher quantity by the law of demand. And so this is gonna have two influences that are gonna balance and counterbalance each other coming through revenue. The so th what ends up happening, what is the relationship between revenue and, and elasticity? Well, turns out if, if demand is elastic, is very responsive, then if you raise the price, you will reduce revenue. If you lower the price, you will increase revenue. Why? Well, if demand is really responsive, then for a small change in price, you're gonna get a more than proportional effect on quantity which means I'm gonna change price a little bit and raise or lower it, but that's gonna be small relative to the influence of the quantity effect on revenue. So the quantity effect is gonna be dominating. So if I reduce my price a little bit, yeah, I'm gonna earn less on every unit sold. However, I'm gonna make up for it by selling a much larger volume. On the other hand, if you raise your price and demand is very elastic, very responsive, you're gonna lose a lot of customers, you're gonna lose a lot of volume, and more than you would be making in terms of the additional increase in price. Okay, so here the, uh, the output effect is dominant if demand is elastic. What if demand is inelastic? Now you've got, you've got customers who are really unresponsive to price. Of course you wanna raise price, right? So you raise the price, you get a less than proportional response on quantity, right? You get a per the percentage change in price is much larger than the percentage change in quantity if demand is inelastic, which means I'm gonna get this larger premium on every unit sold. I'm gonna sell fewer, but not appreciably f fewer, right? And so, uh, oh, so then I, let me show you what I, what I drew out here. When demand is elastic, right? This would, this would correspond to a computed elasticity of larger than one. For this to happen, remember the definition of elasticity is the percentage change in quantity divided by the percentage change in price. This is a fraction. To get a fraction larger than one, you need the, the numerator larger than the denominator. So I drew the, the, the numerator much larger than the denominator. Well, if we have a larger quantity effect, smaller price effect, uh, this is telling us that we have uh, we have really responsive demand. We change price a little bit, and we got a really large change in in quantity. Right, the output effect is dominant. If demand is inelastic, unresponsive, this will compute to elasticities in absolute value less than one. So here we get a to to make this happen. Right, this is where the denominator is larger than the numerator. So denominator is larger. The, much larger change in price, much smaller change in quantity. And so we have a situation where uh, consumers are not responding very much to the price change, which means you can get away with changing price substantially. You're gonna raise revenue by raising price because the, the price uh, benefit is, is larger. So now I wanna talk about, or I wanna show this kind of a numerical example, and I'll kind of illustrate this with a graph and then with a table. So let's just assume the following demand curve. I selected this one, let price equal to 10 minus Q, because it's one that you can kind of easily wrap your mind around because 10 minus Q is a really easy linear demand curve to work with. So, okay, let's go ahead and graph this thing. The vertical intercept is gonna be 10. The horizontal intercept is gonna be 10. Price is vertical, quantity is on the horizontal. And the midpoint is gonna be five, five. Now remember, the top part of, the, of a linear demand curve is gonna to correspond to very elastic demand and the middle to unit elastic demand, the bottom to very inelastic demand. So I say demand is elastic over the top, over the quantities corresponding to the top portion of the demand curve, inelastic over the bottom of the demand curve. Great, so don't worry about this of this uh, concave function just yet. Let's focus on this table. So in the table, I have a column of prices, I have a column of quantities, and then I have a column of revenues. So where do I get these prices and quantities from? From this function, right? So if price is, uh, price is equal to 10 minus Q, 
So if price is 10, what's the quantity? Zero, right? So if we're getting P is equal to 10, to make that happen, quantity has to be zero. What if price is 9? To make that happen, quantity has to be 1. If price is 5, to make that happen, quantity has to be 5. If price is 0, to make that happen, quantity has to be 10. OK, so now I've got my, this is just representing this function, and I just put down the integers. So, But we've got revenue, though, because price times quantity is going to be revenue. I can just multiply horizontally here, so 10 times Q. or Price times quantity, P times Q, is 10 times 0 is 0. Uh, 9 times 1 is 9. 8 times 2 is 16. 7 times 3 is 21. 6 times 4 is 24. We're rising. It's increasing up until where I get 5 times 5 is 25. Then 4 times 6 is 24. 3 times 7 is 21. 2 times 8 is 16. 1 times 9 is 9. 0 times 10 is 0. Right, And the one thing I want to call your attention to is that this is the highest at the midpoint. That's true in general for a linear demand curve. For a linear demand curve, revenue is going to be maximized at the midpoint. Right, So this is also going to correspond to the point where demand is unit elastic. The revenue maximizing quantity is going to be the midpoint of the demand curve. That's also where demand is unit elastic. Now I want to stop here. This is very different from profit maximization. This is not saying that the firm ought to set price, in this case, price and quantity equal to 5. Oh no, the only way that that's going to be optimal is if marginal cost is zero. The firm always wants to produce where marginal revenue is equal to marginal cost. So that's not really what I want to talk about in this video. I've got other videos for that. But I just want to point out uh, the revenue maximizing point is only the profit maximizing point if marginal cost is zero. OK, so let's look at what's happening here. This is the elastic portion of the demand curve. This is the top portion of the demand curve. This is the inelastic portion of the demand curve. This is the bottom portion of the demand curve. You can see that just by looking at the graph. It turns out, over the elastic portion of the demand curve, sure enough, as we lower price, 10, 9, 8, 7, we increase revenue, 0, 9, 16, 21, 24. Right? As you lower the price, you're increasing the revenue. Or if you lower, as you lower the price here, from, top, from 10 down, we're increasing revenue. It's maximized here, 5.5. Five. And then down at the bottom, what happens when we lower price? On the inelastic portion of the demand curve, if you lower the price, revenue falls. Right Now we're on the downsloping portion. That's what this graph is showing. I plotted the revenue function. This is revenue. This is the same quantity axis as up here. Whoops, as up here. See, I've got the same quantity axis. The top portion of the revenue curve is going to be five, a quantity of five. And this is here I've labeled 25. Why? That's from this list right here. The revenue curve is going to be zero at two places. So I plotted zero here and zero here, right? The revenue curve is zero at a quantity of zero and at, and at a quantity of 10, right? This thing's quadratic. It opens downward. And then I plotted the other points. And this is showing, sure enough, over the elastic portion of the demand curve, as quantity rises, as price falls, demand ri or revenue rises. As quantity rises and price falls, revenue falls once we're past, once we're on the inelastic portion of the demand curve. The other thing is sometimes you'll see some text and some professors will, will teach this with, with areas of squares corresponding to the revenue. I've actually got that built in here, right? So you can think of price times quantity as length times width, right? Two-dimensional. This would be like length. This would be like width. Price times quantity is like length times width. So then the area would be the revenue, or the revenue would be the area. OK, so the largest is going to be the square, right? 5 times 5. So this is the area of a square. This is revenue right here, right? 5 times 5. OK, and then you could think of all the other things. Well, all these other, all these other revenues, if you were to plot out 4 and then 6 or whatever, right, uh, would correspond to rectangles. But it's the square that's going to have the largest, uh, it's going to have the largest area, have the largest revenue. So. Uh, all right. And then my last comment, yeah, revenue is maximized at the midpoint of the demand curve. Anyway, go ahead, like, and subscribe, and I will see you in the next video.